We're going to start this with a little reminder of the triangle inequality. And we've done this a couple of times, but it doesn't hurt to take a look at it again to remind you about how the sides of a triangle are related to each other. So in any two sides of a triangle, their sum has to be greater than the length of the third side. So the way I drew it out here, AB plus BC has to be greater than AC. If that wasn't true in this case, AB would lie like this, BC would lie like this, and then maybe AC would be that third side down there, and you wouldn't get those two sides up off the ground in order to form that angle up at the top. So if the two sides aren't greater than the third, you don't have a triangle. And that works for any pair of two. So there's actually two other parts of this triangle inequality in that AC and BC have to be greater than AB and the, the third set as well, right? So AB and AC have to be greater than BC. So the question is, if I have sides of 15, 18, and 37, can they make a triangle? Well, the 37 plus 15 is greater than 18, right? So 37 plus 15 is greater than 18. It passes that one. 18 plus 37, I can see that's bigger than 15. But is 15 plus 18 greater than 37? It is not. 15 plus 18 is 33, and that's not bigger than 37. So those two sides will be kind of like this where you have an 18 over here, or 15 over here, and a 37 down the bottom there. You could run this through in a class with pipe cleaners. You can run it through with the pieces of spaghetti that you cut to different side lengths to see if people can figure out what makes a triangle and what doesn't. But that's what we call it. We call it the triangle inequality. All right, distance around a plane figure, a plane figure just being some figure that lies in a two-dimensional plane. We have a name for that. We call it the perimeter. Now, there are certain types of perimeters, right? If it was a circle, we would call it the circumference. But at the end, you're walking around something, and you want to find out how long, or how long that distance is around an object. So we call that the perimeter, the length of a simple closed curve. The sum of the lengths of the sides of a polygon is called the perimeter. So very simple. If you want to find the perimeter of this triangle over here, the perimeter is the sum of the sides. So you have 3 plus 3 plus 3. Perimeter is a linear measure, so we're going to answer with some sort of units that measure length, in this case, centimeters. Now, you notice that the second one doesn't have any numbers in it. Well, that's okay. We're told that the top and the bottom have length L. The left and the right side have length W. So if I wanted to find the perimeter, the perimeter would be L plus W plus L plus W, right? And I've walked all the way around that figure. It happens to be a rectangle. I can simplify this by saying that the perimeter is twice the length plus twice the width. Now, what kind of units am I going to put in here? I don't have any, so I could just write units. When we write that, that tells us that we're talking about linear units. We're not talking about square units, which would measure area, or cubic units, which would measure volume. All right, how about this guy over here? This guy is a square. He's got four congruent sides, one right angle, and if that one angle is a right angle, then the other three are as well. So in this case, the perimeter is just side plus side plus side plus side, which is four times the side. Okay, same thing, just units. Now, what's funny about this guy over here? This one has different units of measure. It's got centimeters and it's got millimeters. So we can convert the centimeters to millimeters. We can convert the millimeters to centimeters. This one seems easy enough just to take the millimeters, divide it by 10, and get centimeters. So this thing over here is 4 centimeters. This thing over here is 6 centimeters. Now add them all together, and I, you could start anywhere you want. I'm going to start with this, and I'm going to work my way up like that. So I've got 3 plus 1 plus 3 plus 4, plus 6. So 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 3 is 7. 7 plus 10 is 17. So my perimeter is 17 centimeters. If you had changed these centimeters to millimeters, then you could have also answered 170 millimeters. And that's why units are important, because if you just answer 170, I could make a guess that you meant millimeters, but I'm not sure. Right, what's the perimeter of a regular n-gon with a side of s? Well, in this case, it would just be the number of sides times a length. Okay, So if you have a regular pentagon, you take each side and multiply it by 5 because they're the same, if it's regular. All right, so a circle. We already defined a circle a while ago. Set of all points in the plane, the same distance from that center. Right, In the same plane means that it's not a sphere. 
it's a circle. So the radius is the distance from the center to a point on the outside. So from the center to a point on the outside, that's the radius. If you go from end to end of the circle and go through the center specifically, then what you've got is you've got the diameter. So the radius goes from a center to a point on the outside. The diameter goes through two points on the circle and goes to the center. Now, my last question on there said, what happens if it doesn't go through the center? What happens if you have something that looks like this? Well, there's a name for that. We call it a chord. All right, so a segment that goes from one point on the circle to another point on the circle is called a chord. And sometimes you'll see the diameter defined as a chord that passes through the center of a circle. All right, circumference in a circle is the perimeter. So if you want to know how far it is around the circle, a linear measure will give you the circumference. Okay, if you take the circumference and divide it by the diameter, it's always the same, right? That ratio is always the same. In fact, that ratio is pi. Down the bottom, I wrote it out like this, that circumference divided by diameter is pi. If that's the case, then it's also true that circumference is equal to pi times diameter. Well, if the diameter is twice the radius, the circumference is 2 times the pi times the radius. So that uh, formula you're probably familiar with. I don't know if you ever looked at it as dividing both sides by 2r and showing that pi is actually the ratio of circumference to diameter. So that pi, they figured out thousands of years ago that if you took the length around that circle and divided it by the diameter, you always got the same value, which is kind of cool, right? It doesn't matter what size the circle is. Take the distance around the circle, divide it by the diameter of the circle, and you always get that same number. That number is pi. Pi is an irrational number. You can keep going with those decimals forever and ever and ever. They've been running that on supercomputers for years and years and haven't come up with the end of pi yet, which is good. Pi is tasty. Oh, wrong kind of pi. All right, arc length. Suppose I don't want to walk all the way around the circle. I just want to walk part of the way around the circle. Well, that distance we call an arc length. That part in the picture that you're looking at that's blue, that is called an arc of the circle. Okay, So it's a fraction of the circumference. Now, this is the formula that the textbook gives, pi times the radius times the angle measure. We tend to use this Greek letter here, which is theta. Take that and divide it by 180. What if instead of doing that, I just said I want a fraction of my circumference? So suppose I have a circle with a radius of 4 and an angle measure of 60 degrees. Now, you know that an entire circle has 360 degrees in the whole circle. Well, that 60 degrees is how much of the circle? Well, 63 60ths. I'm looking at one sixth of the circle. So if I want to walk around one sixth of the circle, that means I'm going to need to walk around one sixth of the circumference. Well, you told me before the circumference was two times pi times the radius. So two times pi times the radius is in this case going to be eight pi over six, which I could simplify to four pi over three, whatever units I have. So here, Let's make this a small circle. So that'll be inches. And that'll be inches. So you can use that formula, pi r theta over 180, if you want. This textbook tends to present this material with a lot of formulas. I would rather remember a few simple formulas and then just apply them to the situation that I'm in. So in this case, if I want the length of the arc, instead of memorizing pi r theta over 180, I'll just remember that I'm looking for a fraction of the circumference. How much? Well, take the angle measure. In this case, I made it up. It was 60 degrees. Divide it by 360 in a circle. That means I'm looking for a sixth of the circle. So I want a sixth of the circumference. Throw the formulas in from there. All right, so I got four questions here. If you've got these on the slide, this is actually the last one that goes with this section. So I'm going to get out of here for a second, and I'm going to pull myself up a whiteboard so I can actually write these things out. All right, so the first one says, find the circumference of a circle with a radius of 2. All right, so I've got a circle with a radius of 2, and I want to find the circumference. Well, I know the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. That formula I am going to have to memorize. It told me the radius was measured in meters, 
So it would make sense then that the circumference is also going to be measured in meters. So the circumference is 2 times pi times the radius. So 4 pi meters. Now, this is we, something we would refer to as an exact value. If you're going to use this answer in another answer, like you're going to take this and then add something else to it and add something else, keep them as exact values as long as you can. All right, your other option, if you want an approximation, is to grab your calculator and multiply four times pi. Most calculators have a pi key on them somewhere. If you can use the pi key on your calculator, you'll get a better decimal approximation than using 3.14. 3.14 is an acceptable approximation for pi, 3.14159, I think, and then it keeps going from there. But if I want a decimal approximation, 12.57 meters. And sometimes I do want a decimal approximation, right? Sometimes if I'm trying to buy, I don't know, something to put around a garden or something, and I want to know how much fencing I need, if I go in and I say I'm looking for 4 pi meters of fencing, that's not going to be as helpful as saying I need a little bit less than 13 meters of fencing, and then I can buy with just what I need. All right, the second one says I want to find the radius of a circle with a circumference of 15 pi. So this works in the other direction. This time they told me that their circumference was 15 pi. I want to find the radius. All right, same idea. Circumference equals 2 times pi times the radius, except here I'm going to put in the 15 pi on the left-hand side, and I want to solve for the radius. So a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. All right, the pi's cancel. 15 over 2 is 7 and a half. 7 and a half is my radius. Did I have units? Sure, I did. So they gave me the units in meters. So if the circumference is in meters, then the radius is in meters as well. All right, let's take a look at the third one. The third one gave me the length of a 25-degree arc of a circle with a diameter of 10. So it told me that the diameter was 10 and that the central angle was 25 degrees. All right, first of all, I, I like 2 pi r as my formula. So if the diameter is 10, then the radius is 5. So don't use one in place of the other. Make sure that you use them correctly. All right, first question is, how much of the circle do I want? Well, I don't want to walk around a whole lot. I just want to walk around 25 three sixtieths of the circle. So I want that much of 2 times pi times the radius. All right, so rather than memorize funky formulas, this tells me how much of the circle I want. This tells me how far it would be all around the circle. So I don't want to walk all the way around the circle. There's 25 three sixtieths. All right, so on the top here, 2 times pi times 5 is 10 pi. So I get 25 times 10 times pi over 360. 25 times 10 is 250. So 250 pi over 360. I could simplify that, right? Make it 25 pi over 36. That many centimeters. If you'd rather have a decimal approximation, that thing is an exact value. If the question on the homework asks for the exact value, Leave it like that. Leave it as 25 pi over 36. Otherwise, it's not going to take the answer even if it's the decimal equivalent. All right. When I write it out, I end up with 2.18. So this is a very small circle and a very small distance around a very small circle. All right, last example here. This one says... I want to find the radius of an arc whose central angle is 87 degrees and whose arc length is 154 centimeters. All right, these numbers do not look pretty, but that's okay. The central angle we said was 87 degrees. We know that the arc length is 154 centimeters, and we're trying to find the radius. Well, what have we been doing so far? So far, we've been saying that the arc length is in this case 87 three sixtieths of 2 times pi times the radius, and that thing is the arc length. Well, it looks like I've got everything I need except for that missing radius. So if I multiply 87 times 2, I get 174. So 174 over 360 times pi times the radius 
equals 154. And the rest of this is just going to be us solving this thing algebraically. First thing I might do is multiply both sides by 360 over 174. And you notice over here, the 174s go away, the 360s go away, and I'm left with pi times the radius equals, at this point, I'm going to multiply this out and get a decimal, 154 times 360, take that answer and divide it by 174, and I get 318.62. And then for my last step, I'll just divide both sides by pi. I could have done that before, but sometimes it's not a bad idea to do it one step at a time so that you don't lose anything along the way. All right, when I do that, I get that my radius equals 101.42. 101.42 what? It's got to be centimeters. All right, so if the arc is 154, then the radius is 101.42. Okay, that's what the question asked. And that's the end of this section on perimeters and circumference.